released in 1957, 310 to Yuma is a classic Western film. Have you ever watched it? What makes it stand out? Maybe it's the gripping storyline or the strong characters. When did you first see it? Share your memories below. This movie has endured for decades, becoming a symbol of the film industry. What qualities do you think have contributed to its lasting impact? Stay tuned because we've got plenty of interesting facts about this movie, funny, shocking, and sad. Keep watching to learn more. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. The 1957 movie 310 to Yuma made a big mark and has stuck around for a long time. It's still important today because it tells a powerful story about doing the right thing, being brave, and making sacrifices. The characters in the movie have to make hard decisions, and their struggles connect with people even now. The movie talks about good and bad, and how people can be complicated, which are ideas that always matter. Also, it's really exciting and keeps you interested in what's going on. 310 to Yuma show the way for other Western movies and change how they tell stories. Glenn Ford, known for his role in the film, learned to ride at 11 and worked as a stable boy with Will Rogers. He was also considered for Robert Ryan's role in The Wild Bunch, according to a biography of Sam Peckinpah. This film, along with High Noon, influenced Howard Hawks to make Rio Bravo, opting for more optimistic westerns. Richard Eagle, known for his role in the 1957 movie 310 to Yuma, had a son named Barry who was a former touring PGA golfer. Eagle himself was a health and exercise enthusiast who didn't smoke. He enjoyed surfing despite having fair skin, spending much of his free time on the waves. Tragically, he had many acquaintances in Yale, a surfing community who speculated that overexposure to the sun led to untreated skin cancer. Glenn Fort, another actor from 310 to Yuma, was set to make his first public appearance in 15 years at a 90th birthday tribute gala in 2006. However, due to a series of minor strokes since his retirement, he was too frail to attend. These health issues prevented him from being part of the celebration in his honor at Grumman's Egyptian Theater in Hollywood. During World War II, actor Glenn Ford secretly joined the Marine Corps to serve his country. He hid his identity to enlist, showing his dedication to duty over fame. This act highlights his commitment to the war effort, revealing his humility and patriotism. It's fascinating to think about how his military experience might have influenced his later movie roles, adding depth to his characters. Glenn Ford's story of going from Hollywood to the battlefield continues to inspire us, showing that true heroes can come from unexpected places. Glenn Ford, engaged to actress Evelyn Ankers, had his engagement broken when she met Richard Denning while he was on location in 1942. Felicia Farr, who also starred in the film, has another daughter named Denise Farr Gordon from her marriage to ex-husband Lee Farr. Denise Farr Gordon was married to the late actor Don Gordon. Interestingly, Glenn Ford was initially offered the role of Dan Evans, but refused, suggesting himself for the role of Ben Wade instead. Glenn Ford, known for his role in the movie 310 to Yuma, celebrated his 90th birthday at the Egyptian Theater in Hollywood. His son, Peter Ford, hosted the event, which featured a showing of Gilda. Over 700 tickets quickly sold out for the gala. Richard Yeakel, a favorite of director Robert Aldrich, appeared in seven of his films, including his first feature Big Leaguer and his last, All the Marbles. Before becoming an actor, Glenn Ford worked as a barkeep in a Santa Monica bar for $5 a week. Before delving into the film, it's interesting to note Ford Rainey's diverse background. Before his acting career took off, he worked various jobs, including logging, lineman work, fruit picking, fishing, and clam digging. Around 20 to 25 minutes into the story, Ben Wade steps to the saloon door and whistles the soundtrack's theme. This is unique because film scores are typically composed after filming, but this whistle was added during post-production. Notably, this movie marked one of the rare instances where Glenn Ford portrayed a villain. He also played a similar role in The Man from Colorado. Set in a time when most westerns embraced color, this film opted for a stark black and white, enhancing its desolate landscape. Using red filters on the lenses intensified the drought-ridden setting. Actors Robert M. Hart and Henry Jones, known for their roles in Alfred Hitchcock Presents, both starred in an episode titled The Mortuis. Glenn Ford, recognized for his roles in culturally significant films, including Gilda and Superman, also starred in 310 to Yuma. The decision to shoot in black and white with the addition of red filters contributed to the film's unique visual style. Glenn Ford, known for his role in the 310 to Yuma, had a notable lineage. He was related to Sir John and MacDonald, Canada's first prime minister. 
His support for President Lyndon B. Johnson's Vietnam War escalation led him to travel with a combat camera crew from the demilitarized zone to the Mekong Delta. Ford's ancestry comprised English, Scottish, Irish, and Dutch roots, with family connections to the town of Horwich in Lancashire, England. His diverse background added depth to his portrayal in the movie. In putting together the cast, Delmer Daves initially picked actors he'd worked with before, like Glenn Ford and Felicia Farr. They were already familiar with the kind of characters and themes Daves liked to explore in his movies, so they fit right into the story. This movie didn't just stay on the screen. It actually influenced how people in Cuba talked. They started using the word Yumas to mean Americans who visited and La Yuma to refer to the whole United States. It shows how important the movie was culturally. Glenn Ford, who was part of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, really brought something special to his role. He made his character deeper, which made the whole movie even better. In 1951, a movie project called The Sins of Sarah Ferry, starring Glenn Ford, faced big problems and got canceled because it was too much like another movie at the time. This kind of thing happens sometimes in Hollywood when making movies. After being in movies for a long time, he stopped acting in 1991 because he wasn't feeling well. Fans who loved watching him on screen felt sad when he retired. Another famous person from old Hollywood was thought to be born in 1910, but recent careful checks showed he was actually born in 1908. This discovery changed how we understand his life and career in the tough world of showbiz. These stories from Hollywood's past show how things can go right or wrong in the entertainment business, affecting both famous people and the movies they make. Glenn Ford's initial film venture with 20th Century Fox led to mixed feelings upon its completion, prompting a return to New York. Subsequently, he engaged in stage work before Columbia beckoned, marking the beginning of his two-decade tenure with the studio. Critics lauded Van Heflin's portrayal, contrasting it with divided opinions on Glenn Ford's performance. Critic David Thompson criticized Ford's perceived inability to embody malevolence. Like his close associate Ronald Reagan, Ford underwent a political evolution from Democrat to conservative Republican. Glenn Ford, a former Marine who later became a Navy captain, played a significant role in the film. Alongside him, Van Heflin, who won an Academy Award for a gangster role, added depth to the cast. The movie, where he played an important part, has left a strong impression on audiences. However, when the credits rolled and the story ended, many viewers found the ending unrealistic and criticized it heavily. Despite the great performances by Ford and Heflin, the final twists and turns of the story left some confused. The unexpected plot changes led to debates among moviegoers, with discussions about whether the ending was realistic. As opinions settled, people remained divided. Some liked the film's different ending, while others wanted a more realistic one. Regardless of differing opinions, Glenn Ford and Van Heflin did a great job bringing the characters to life, which helped make the movie successful. Looking back, the movie has become a classic, enduring despite the controversy about its ending. The performances, especially by Ford and Heflin, continue to be celebrated. The story's complexity captivates viewers, prompting them to watch it again and discover new details each time. In the end, 310 to Humor remains a great movie that sparks discussions, reminding audiences of the artistry and storytelling.